When building an RPG sandbox campaign, we need to provide our players with enough information so they can make choices on what they want to accomplish within our campaign worlds. We do this most often through hooks. Hooks are seeds of adventure. They are rumors, bits of lore, events, items, etc. Things that can provide your players with that information that offers them a compelling direction. It sort of helps point them in a way that they may wish to explore within your sandbox campaign. Hooks can also add to the verisimilitude of your campaign world by reinforcing certain information or ideas. If your players hear about an ancient underground city from an old sage's tome and then hear another story from another adventurer that fled from this massive underground complex in Terre that was the size of a city with streets paved in gold, well, they'll start to get the idea that may, this may be a place that they wanna go check out and explore further. The more hooks you can provide, really create that sort of interconnectedness that help increase the richness and the density of your campaign world for your players. But how do we go about making interesting hooks or for that matter, interesting premises for factions or campaign backdrops? It can feel like a lot of work to come up with ideas that offer that enticement for your players to explore and check out your different adventure seeds. Well, what if I told you you don't have to be completely original? In fact, we can borrow from real life, real history, and take those events from our real world and turn it into things that suit our campaign needs. Hi, welcome back aboard the Earthmo. I'm Randall, and today we're talking about how to take real life and twist it to the fantastical for our RPG campaigns. In 1325, the rivaling city-states of Modena and Bologna, in, located in northern Italy, went to war with one another. A myth surrounding the incident states that the war was caused by Modena stealing a bucket from a Bologna well. Yep, you heard that right, a bucket. A wooden bucket, an oaken bucket. Now this myth is mostly incorrect. The war was declared because Modena had captured the Bologna castle of Montevallo. At the time, Modena and Bologna were divided by supporting the rivaling political claims of the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope. Modena supported the emperor, Bologna the pope. The war itself was somewhat remarkable too. It consisted of a single battle in which Modena won with 7,000 men versus Bologna's 32,000 fielded men. Modena had a more skilled and experienced army, whereas Bologna fielded whoever they could find. As a result of Bologna's disorganization, Modena being outnumbered four to one was still able to break them and win the day and thus the war. The wooden bucket, however, is real. Most accurate accounts believe it was taken as a trophy by Modena after the war ended. In fact, the bucket still exists today. It is on display in Modena as a sort of token of pride over their rivalry with Bologna. In total, 2,000 men were killed in the war, which would ultimately be dubbed the War of the Oaken Bucket. The War of the Oaken Bucket embodies the saying that life is stranger than fiction. No one would make up such a story. It's too ridiculous. 2,000 lives over a wooden bucket, and yet here we are. If you struggle to come up with strong hooks or backdrops for your campaign, you should steal. Steal Like an Artist is a short and great book by Austin Kleon on how to get your creative process flowing by borrowing, blending, and modifying different works and ideas that you're inspired by. Things that you enjoy, things that you can take and make your own by putting your own unique thumbprint on. Of course, you can steal from fiction too. Movies, books, video games, art, music are all great media that we can take inspiration from and borrow from. But as I highlighted earlier, history has a lot of those great stories and aspects that we can borrow from too for our RPGs. The great thing about history is that we can really understand the context in which the event occurred. We can understand who the people were or the factions were, what they wanted, what their motivations were, why this thing was happening and unfolded the way that it did. 
history is cloth that you can take wholesale and you can use to build campaign backdrops or adventure seeds around with a little bit of modification to fit your own flair or ideas for your campaign. While life can be stranger than fiction, it's not strange to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you are enjoying this video and you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Let's take a look at a simple two-step method on how we can generate hooks for our campaigns from a historical event. This would also work fine with fictional inspiration if you want to go that route too, but you may not need to do item number two so much depending on the source that you're borrowing from. For the sake of this discussion, I'm just going to narrow my focus to historical events only. Okay, step one is to really understand the context of your event. You need to know why the historical event occurred in the first place. Who was involved? What were their motivations? Why did the events unfold the way that they did historically? Once you kind of adequately understand the historical event, you can map out how that's going to fit into your RPG campaign. If you're starting a brand new campaign, then that's pretty easy. You just sort of build the relevant factions you need and kind of set up the backdrop on setting up this potential hook or conflict that's going on within your campaign. If you're implementing this idea into an existing campaign, that can be a little bit trickier. You'll need to decide if you can use the factions you've already established in your campaign, or if you need to create new factions or NPCs to introduce this new adventure or conflict idea into your campaign. If you're going to introduce new factions, you'll need to think about why are they emerging in your campaign now? Why haven't they been important until up to this point? And what makes this adventure hook now compelling for your players to get involved with this new faction that they haven't seen before? You don't have to go too in depth here. You just want to have some sort of simple explanation for if your players are starting to question or ask about it at the table and just sort of adding kind of that depth and context to your world by having a little bit of forethought really kind of helps set you up on the right foot. Step two is to take the event and modify it. If you're using an obscure source like the War of the Oaken Bucket, well, you're probably fine unless all of your players are from Northern Italy. But if you're adapting something a little bit more well-known, like a famous World War II battle or World War II itself, well, you're going to want to put some more twists on that. Try changing the major events a bit, give different aspects to the key factions that are involved. You can even blend different events or factions together in sort of a mashup to put a unique twist on two events by combining them together. Another obvious trick is to adjust the event for the genre of your RPG campaign. So if you're running a D&D &D or a fantasy RPG, well, you're gonna wanna put some more fantastical twists onto it. Maybe there's some divine bent or arcane bent to it, something like that. Or if you're running a sci-fi campaign, then how can you modify the technological levels and aspects of the event to fit those and be cohesive with the universe that you're playing within? Let's say I'm modifying the War of the Oaken bucket for my D&D &D campaign. Well, maybe they are fighting over a bucket, but maybe it's actually a decanter of endless water. Now we have this magic item that's involved. Maybe it's a sacred relic, or perhaps it was created by a historically important mage to one of the factions or states that had it stole it from them. Now we have this motivation on why the state or the faction would go to war to get it back. Okay, now that we've gone over our simple two-step method, why don't we take a look at a couple more case studies to see how we could modify them. In 1917, three Portuguese children declared a prophecy that the Virgin Mary would appear and perform miracles on October 13th of that year. The children reported seeing apparitions of an angel and eventually apparitions of Virgin Mary herself, which led them to their prophecy of these miracles that were forthcoming. Their declarations drew the attention of many people in the area, and on October 13, 1917, in Fatima, Portugal, 
30 to 40,000 people showed up to witness the miracle of the sun. Countless testimonies came out that day from witnesses who said that they saw extraordinary solar activity. The sun appeared to dance and zigzag across the sky. It would advance towards Earth and fall back. It would emit multicolored light and radiant colors. According to the reports, the event lasted 10 minutes. The Catholic Church would go on to investigate the events to determine if indeed the events were consistent with a miracle of Catholic theology. Years later, the church declared that the miracle was indeed worthy of belief and permitted officially the formation of the cult of Our Lady of Fatima. Okay, distilling this down, we have a prophet, oracle, seer type individual or small group of individuals, trio in this case. We have a divine entity. We have inexplicable solar activity or cosmic activity. And we have the formation of a cult. How do we use this or modify it for our RPG campaigns? Well, straight off the bat, this is already pretty fantastical, especially if your game is featuring the divine within it. To me, this hook offers the invitation of a new faction into your game. These guys are making divine declarations and people are starting to believe them. You have this cult that is starting to form. What's the motivation behind these prophets? What are they trying to achieve? Do they make another religious faction within the area of your campaign nervous? Or perhaps there is someone that is trying to trick people with odd illusions of celestial events. Maybe they're trying to scare people away from an area rather than draw them in. Why would that be? Would they want to control that area for themselves? Is there something valuable there that they want to explore or research further? These are things you can start to think about as you're trying to integrate a historical event like the Miracle of the Suns into your campaign. Um, and you know, there's no right or wrong way to go about it. Whatever interpretation makes the most sense to you and you think would offer a compelling uh, adventure hook for your players or a compelling conflict, that's the way you should go about adding it into your game. Okay, let's take a look at one more. In 1919, a storage tank in the north end of Boston, Massachusetts burst. The contents, 2.3 million gallons, that's 8,700 cubic meters for my metric-based friends, of molasses. The molasses rushed through the streets of Boston at an estimated 35 miles an hour. It ended up killing 21 people and injuring another 150. Residents reported for decades later on hot summer days they could smell the residual smell of that molasses. Let's distill this down. We have a disaster, a liquid disaster in this case, so a flood. We have significant casualties and we have this kind of established folklore around this disastrous event. How would we use this in an RPG campaign? Well, for me, this screams a wizard did it. Perhaps they had some crazy experiment going on and the disaster broke loose and it caused casualties to a nearby town or village that they lived in. The most obvious answer here for me for a fantastical molasses would be an ooze of some kind, perhaps a gigantic black pudding. As for being a compelling adventure seed for our players, well, maybe the ooze is still on the loose, or maybe the wizard is on the loose and hasn't been held accountable yet for this disaster. Maybe the ooze's caustic nature caused it to expose a long lost dungeon as it burned through the now ruined city streets and exposed the dungeon below. Or if you're using a gigantic gelatinous cube, maybe it absorbed a local merchant guild's treasury or some important magic item and is now on the loose with that. Or maybe it's some other item that's of importance to an NPC or the parties within your campaign. All of these are ways to kind of adapt that molasses disaster into something that is a workable adventure seed for your campaign. While it may be tempting to take a look at these historical events as potential plot lines for adventures in our game, I'd resist that urge. 
players can do unexpected things. And if you're trying to set them up on some sort of preordained outcome, then you're likely to end up with a train on rails really quick. Why I like these events as hooks in our sandbox is because you can make the interesting thing already have happened and set that as the hook for the adventure. It's occurred. Now the players can get involved and try to resolve the aftermath of that issue. The war of the bucket is underway. What are they going to do about it? Are they going to try to steal the decanter for themselves? The cult of the dancing sun is growing belligerent and causing problems with other faiths in the area. What are the players going to do about it? The giant gelatinous cube is already on the loose. Are the players going to go after the treasure that's contained within it? Use the compelling information as a call to action. Leave something unresolved that's enticing to the players and then let them take their actions from there. And you can sort of let their choices and actions dictate the rest of the adventure rather than sort of trying to set them up for some preordained path based on a historical event. You're trying to adapt and get them to arrive at the same outcome of it. So that's it. Take inspiration from historical events to drive action into our RPG campaigns. You can take the elements you like from these historical events, blend them, modify them, change them so they fit within your RPG campaign, and you're good to go. Life can indeed be stranger than fiction, but it's something we can lean into to create those compelling events in our sandboxes. That will give your players some juicy bait to bite on those hooks and go off and start adventuring. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It really does help the channel a lot. I have a monthly newsletter, Enchanted Nimbus, that I publish on Substack. You can sign up to have it directly sent to your email. Thanks for hopping aboard the Earthboat. I'll see you in the next one.